Margaret, thank you very much for agreeing to be part of the project. I'd just like to start, I just want to get a little sense of your earliest years, where you grew up and where you went to school. I grew up in, um, in Hurstville, in the St George area. I uh, lived there all my life um, until I eventually left home in um, my sort of young 20s. Uh, was educated by the Brown Josephites, who are very much in the news, of course, at the moment with uh, the first canonisation. So I went to St Declan's Primary School uh, at Penshurst. I went to St Joseph's um, Girls High School from years, what we now call years uh, 7 to 10 at Cogra. And then I went to Mount St Joseph at Milpera for my years 11 and 12. What subjects did you excel in? Most of them. <laughs> in other words, you did well at school. <laughs> yes, yeah, all of them, probably. Were there lawyers in your family? Oh, no. Not at all. Not unless you start tracing back um, to the um, early 1800s. Um, on my father's side, the family is a very old family uh, in this country. My one relative, I can't trace back, I haven't added up the great, great, great aspects of it. But one relative, Rebecca Oakes, um, at one stage was reputed to be the first free child born in the colony. That, uh, it can't be accurate historically, one should imagine, because she was born in April 1789. Um, and one can't imagine that there was no child conceived and born um, before then. But she's the first recorded birth. Uh, in New South Wales. so, mm -hmm. And when you go back through that early history, um, I traced it at one stage, and uh, one of those forebears was the first constable of Parramatta, um, and uh, one was a magistrate uh, up in the Clarence area. A police magistrate? I think they used to call them that in those it days. Probably would have been, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but then there was really nothing um, for a long, 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 long time. And really, my you would put my background into the lower socioeconomic class. My father was a Milton. Was your father encouraging of your interests in law? When did you actually conceive that you felt you might like to take up law as a career? In about the October of the year I left school. <laughs> Presumably with very good marks. <laughs> yes, well, I got straight into law school. Um, no, look, we, we just did not have a professional background, but uh, I think there were t perhaps three significant influences. First, um, I would have to say was my mother, who, who was very keen on education, and she had a, a, a real affinity with the Brown Josephites because of their ethos of wanting to provide an um, a excellent ed education uh, for children of, of uh, poorer families, you know, families who just did not have money. And I was one of five. And um, so, so she, she was very um, open to education. My father was very supportive of education. He really saw his role as being there to support um, financially as, as long as, as, as he could. And then I really do have to say the... The Josephite nuns who taught me were just absolutely fabulous. There were a range of teachers uh, that I had who I still think were amongst the best educators that I could have possibly have had. And, you know, I've spoken to and talked to and I've been involved in education a little bit myself and I, I, just, I just know they were good educators. Can you give us a sense of, of the ethos they imparted to you? Oh, certainly, that we could do what we wanted to, regardless. And that, that was a double whammy coming from that background because um, that was um, an, a gender story and it was an economic story. Yes, I often think of that as the beginning of the girls can do anything era. I, I think it was, yes. And certainly when I was at Mount St Joseph at Milpera, um, the school at St Joseph's Cogra uh, only went to year 10. I, I don't think those types of schools really exist anymore, but it only went to year 10. So if you wanted to go on to year 12, you had to change schools, um, whichever way you wanted to do things. And when I went to Milpera, it was... We were certainly there. They had really 
developed this, again, I'll use the word ethos, um, they developed this ethos of um, the girls being there uh, to enter tertiary education. It, it really was their aim for anyone who wanted uh, to go on to years 11 and 12. And it was mostly drawn from that school, Mount St. Joseph Malpera itself. Um, but there were uh, perhaps 25% of the class was drawn from classes, from schools which did not have, um, didn't go on to year 12. And um, as I said, it was the encouragement um, to do whatever we wanted to. And I think if you go around that class, it was, there was some variation in, in the in the careers that people chose. People just didn't go back to what was almost the trilogy then of um, what nursing, teaching, or what was the other one, public service or something. I think it was, yeah, mm -hmm. perhaps secretarial. <laughs> that was probably the tr the trilogy. Yeah. And you weren't entertaining notions of any of those. No. <laughs>